A while ago now, I tweeted, do you have any questions for me about absolutely anything? And my friend Brian McManus from the YouTube channel Real Engineering replied, how to works Hank, tell me! And then I replied to him and I said, is this supposed to be worms? And he said, sorry, I got a bit excited there. How do worms copulate? And then he replied again to himself, copulate. So we've got to the bottom of at least what the question is. How do works copulate? And I thought that this would be one section of a larger video, maybe. But now it has to be the whole video because I've been looking into how works copulate. And my God, first of all, we got to figure out what the heck a work is. I mean, worm. What's a worm? How about we ask ChatGPT, what's worm? <laughs> That's all it takes. In biology and technology and literature. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. A diverse group of invertebrate animals with elongated soft bodies. They can be found everywhere in a variety of environments, including soil, water, and parasites and other organisms. Earthworms, roundworms, nematums, and flatworms. Okay, but in biology, what's a worm? Really? This is what I need to get to. They do not belong to a single taxonomic group. Now, sometimes you will hear people say that there's no such thing as a fish, and that's kind of true. Like, we have an idea of what a fish is. It's got fins and gills, and it lives in the water, and it's a vertebrate, uh, and it's not a mammal. That's what a fish is. But I am more closely related to a salmon, which I did eat for dinner last night, than that salmon is to a shark. If there is a thing that is called fish, we and all terrestrial vertebrates are included in it because the ancestor of all terrestrial vertebrates and indeed all vertebrates was a fish. Worms are like that, but more. We got on this list, annelids, nematodes, platyhelminthes, the, I don't even know what this one is. Nermer, nim, nim, ribbon worms and thorny headed worms. What do they all have in common? They got bilateral symmetry. They got soft bodies and they got an elongated shape. They don't have spines and they don't have limbs. They're tubes. And this was like the first thing a thing was. At first, actually, you got one hole and the food goes in one hole and then it comes out the same hole. Huge innovation that worms made the butt can be different from the mouth. So if worms exist, you, an animal who does not poop out of your mouth, are also a worm. So to begin with, worms aren't a scientific thing. They are a category that we put animals in because they look like that. It is, as ChatGPT says here, more of a descriptive term than a scientific one. And yes, I know I'm using a tool that illegally trained on my own YouTube videos, but we're working through that. Now, when you ask, how do worms Couplate. What you probably mean is how do earthworms couplate? Uh, let's see if, if <laughs> yep, they <laughs> figured it out. Earthworm love is cuddly and complicated. Oh, you can watch a deep look video about it. That's always the best case scenario. Deep look is so good. <laughs> Oh my god, look at its little heartbeat. That's upsetting almost. That looks, I mean, now I've seen a lot of animals. <laughs> True though. I've seen a lot of animals have sex. That doesn't sound great, but it's the situation we're in. It's part of my job. And what I can say to you is this looks more like sex than I expected. They're now mature enough to get down to business. Tube-shaped invertebrate. So earthworm sex is basically, I mean, for me, <laughs> it's normal sex. And when I tell you what it's like, you're gonna think that's not normal sex, Hank. But then I'm gonna tell you some other ways that other worms do it, and you're gonna be like, okay, earthworms, actually, that's pretty normal. Do you ever think worms stay subscribed to a streaming service just in case they might someday need to watch something on it? No. Do you think that they've ever stayed subscribed to something because it's just too much trouble to cancel? Actually, probably they would. But not if they had Rocket Money. Rocket Money is the personal finance app that helps you cancel cancel subscriptions, lower your bills, and manage your money better. It's surprisingly easy to set up. I like just click a few buttons and they've got everything and they are searching through your accounts for all of your recurring transactions. And it will show you how much money you spend on subscriptions per year. And you can look at that number and say, is that the number that I want it to be? It probably isn't. And amazingly, oftentimes Rocket Money can help you cancel a subscription with just a couple of taps, which is Good, because that's all worms can do. I use Rocket Money to keep track of all of the decisions that I make, sometimes impulsively, and then I get to decide when, if I want to unmake them. And I can look and be like, actually, actually, 
I didn't even watch that whole show. It's very attractive, very user-friendly, very simple, and it can be as powerful as you want it to be. Rocket Money has helped save its customers up to $740 a year when they use all the features, with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. To save more and spend less, join the over 5 million members using Rocket Money today. Go to rocketmoney.com slash Hank Green, or click the link down in the description to get started for free. You can also unlock even more features with premium again. That's rocketmoney.com slash Hank Green, all one word to get started for free. So how do earthworms do sex? Uh, so if you are asking about earthworms, it is pretty weird. Importantly, all earthworms are hermaphrodites, so they make both sperm and eggs. They are all identical. So if you find another earthworm, that is an earthworm you can breed with as long as it's sexually mature. And then you slide up on each other. They grab onto each other. They hold onto each other with like rings of mucus that they produce. And then they exude sperm from their bodies and it sort of goes along the outside of their body. They sort of cover each other in each other's sperm. The sperm is then absorbed into the body of the mate, so now the mate has both sperm stored inside of it and its own eggs, and that just sits there for a little while as the clitellum, which is this thing, gets ready to produce a little sheath that will then eventually move down the shaft of the worm, collecting up the sperm and the eggs. The sperm and the eggs will then go inside of there, and then they will be fertilized, and it will become a little egg cocoon called a viscid sac. And I guess the viscid sac, uh, they create these little cocoons full up with earthworm eggs. This is wild. The sexual organs are located in the segments 9 to 15, while the ovaries and oviducts in segment 13 release eggs via female pores on segment 14, while sperm is expelled from segment 15. I didn't realize that the segments had unique jobs. That's amazing. As a result, segment 15 of one worm exudes sperm into segments 9 and 10 with its storage vesicles of its mate. Some species use external spermatophores for sperm transfer. Spermatophore is like a sperm package. So I got a packaged up bunch of sperm instead of just like oozing it out. I mean, kind of yuck, but that is, this is how earthworms copulate. I'm saying copulate, it's copulate is the word. I don't want people to be confused. But I did hear once, and I hope I can find this again, that there are some marine worms that have detachable penises that people eat. <laughs> um, maybe. Nope, 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 nope. This is just a penis shaped worm. Uh, maybe if I put this into chat GPT. Uh, do they have detachable penis? They have reproductive peculiarities. Males and females of Osidax worms have very unusual systems. The female worms are much larger and harbor tiny dwarf males within their bodies. All right, all right, Osidax worms. Osidax, a genus of deep sea polychaetes, commonly called bone worms or zombie worms. The worms were found living in the bones of decaying gray whale in the Monterey Canyon. Sexual dimorphism. Osidax males are notably smaller than their female counterparts. Between 50 and 10 microscopic dwarf males live inside the tube surrounding a single female and never develop past the larval stage. I'm telling you, when you ask the question, how do worms copulate? The answer is every way you could possibly imagine. I think that the one I'm thinking of there is a epitoki whereby sexually immature worms transform into pelagic morphs capable of sexual reproduction. After fertilization, they release their gametes rapidly uh, through rapid disintegration? What? What? Here I go. I'm going to release my gametes now. Wait, everybody watch. Oh, damn. I died. Oh, my God. <laughs> that... I have, oh my god, every time I see it happen, I am more amazed! Oh, I have to tell you about flatworms. They do it one of the coolest way. So flatworms are uh, hermaphrodites, but when they have sex, they fight to decide who gets to be the male. And the way they do this is with, I think it's called penis fencing? Yeah, it is! Penis fencing is a mating behavior engaged in many species of flatworm. Species which engage in the practice are hermaphroditic, each individual both egg producing and sperm producing, and they fence using extendable two-headed dagger-like stylets. And they are pointed, and in some species hooked, in order to pierce their mate's epidermis and inject sperm into them 
in a process that is called traumatic insemination, uh, whereby there isn't a vagina, there isn't a way in, they have to make it through stabbing. Pairs can either compete with only one individual transferring sperm to the other, or the pair can transfer sperm bilaterally. Both forms of sperm transfer can occur in the same species depending on various factors. Like a weird thing about biology is that uh, we created sexes. There's, like it's obviously bad. It's like, doesn't it seem like it would definitely be worse to have more than one sex. The earthworms didn't do this because that way, no matter, like if you can't find a mate, you find one, you've definitely found the right one. But if there are two sexes, then you find one, there's a 50% chance that you can't even make a baby with that worm. So why would you do it the other way? Why would sexes evolve? And this is weird, uh, but it's basically so that they can specialize. So there are different needs if you have sperm versus if you have eggs. Eggs are much more intensive. You have to take care of those babies. You have to have like an egg that they can actually grow inside of. You have to put proteins and fats in there so that they can succeed. And maybe you invest more and more the way that you continue to do as eggs get more complicated or as you get mammals, live birth, mammary glands, placentas, all this stuff. And so having there be a division of labor is evolutionarily advantageous. Now, there's a thing that people will say where it's like, ah, I see evolution wanted us to have women take care of babies while men do the work. Uh, and I will just point out, uh, we're not a tremendously uh, evolutionarily based species anymore. People's decisions aren't affected by evolutionary biology, they're affected by their own goddamn selves. So taking an evolutionary biology principle and like applying it to culture is generally a red flag. But it is interesting and it shows that actually each one of these flatworms would prefer to not have to take care of the babies. They get the same amount of their genes passed on if they can just get their sperm inside of another one and then run away. And if you're like a super strong, sexy, excellent flatworm, you could do that over and over again, you never have to take care of any babies, and all you have to do is just copulate over and over, which pro probably is great, as long as you're not the one getting stabbed. What do I say? Always learning! But there is this worm that I really want to find. I, I saw it years ago, that there are these worms that they're polychaetes, they're marine, I, I'm pretty sure they're marine polychaetes, and they have an organ, and maybe this is related, but it, it doesn't look exactly like this. Here, it's gonna go again. <laughs> It's amazing! Is it releasing? They're, it's releasing the gametes, but it says after fertilization. I'm a little confused. I gotta, I gotta look. Uh, let's see what epitoki is. Epitoki is a process that occurs in many species of polychaete worms, where in a sexually immature worm, the at atoke is modified or transformed into a sexually mature worm, the epitoke. Unlike the immature form, which is typically benthic, lives on the bottom. Pelagic means you can move around. This is, I think, what I'm looking for. Uh, and the primary benefit to epitoki is increased chances of finding other members of the same species for reproduction. And there are two methods that it can occur. There's schizogamy and epigamy. So we're gonna find out about both of those because you asked how worms copulate! And it's deep, okay? It's deep. Many species go through schizogamy where the atoke uses asexual reproduction to produce buds from, this is what I'm looking for, from its posterior end. And each bud develops into an ep epitoke and once fully formed will break off, becoming free swimming. So one, this is life. Mm. This is wild. So one individual organism will produce many genetically identical epitokes and they will detach from the body of the sexually immature benthic organism, like stuck on the ground organism. And then an epigamy, Another common way, the species that uses this method, the atoke, undergoes physiological and morphological modification as it transforms into the epitoke. It becomes the epitoke. And then they swim around, it brings individuals to the same species together, and I have read that when this happens, and I don't, like, I, I read this and it was credible. <laughs> Oftentimes they can produce so many of these epitokes that the ocean is basically full of them, and that it becomes a, a, kind, a kind of feast festival for some of the people living. Those words must be related. Feast and festival. Festival. Etymology. From, uh, from Festivus, from Festa, from Feast! A festal day. So they have a good old festal day by eating a bunch of these pelagic morphs capable of sexual reproduction. And that's another way that worms copulate. And also, apparently, once they do it, they can instantaneously 
release their gametes through rapid disintegration. But they said after fertilization, so these wouldn't be gametes. Or would they? I don't know. Maybe, maybe they're just like full of both sperm and eggs, and they're like, I'm full of sperm and eggs! And then the sperm and eggs are like close enough together that they, that they have, they, the sperm are fertilizing the eggs, and then we'll find a place to go hang out. I mean, this I didn't know about before I started the video, and I am so pleased. I mean, you know what I mean. You liked it too. Because it was amazing. Because we live on an amazing planet with many amazing ways to couple it. Where the only rule is do what works for the next generation of worm. And yeah, you're a worm because you don't poop out of your mouth. Thanks for watching.